I want to talk to you about where we are now. This thing has set in. We were told it was going to get bad. And I think that people are taking in at an ever deeper level what bad really means. It's kind of like when a ship captain says, it's going to be really rocky. We're going into a storm. There's no way around it. Hunker down. And we're having to hunker down. Hunker down not only physically, but emotionally and psychologically. And it's hard. This is a very heartbreaking, depressing situation. And when things are heartbreaking, the thing to do is to be heartbroken. And when things are this depressing, it's okay to be depressed. We have this cheap yellow smiley face. We've thrown over everything over the last few years for whatever reason in this country, like there's something wrong with being sad. That hasn't served us because it's a attitudinal muscle we need right now to know how to be okay with sad. And a lot of what is happening right now is triggering. <clears throat> so it's not only that the situation is depressing, but it's triggering things in our lives that we're depressed about. The very fact that we can't run around. You know, we're an addictively driven, adrenaline driven society. Gotta go, gotta do. A lot of times we're going and we're doing because we're trying to avoid the deeper emotions and the deeper issues that we need to look at. And they're all coming up now, <clears throat> triggered by all this. But emotionally and psychologically, you detox just like we detox physically. Stuff has to come up in order to be released. America has a lot we need to look at. We need to collectively atone sometimes, just like we individually atone. What does it mean to atone? Catholics go to confession. For Jews, the holiest day of the year is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. In Alcoholics Anonymous, it's a program of amends. You have to admit the exact nature of your wrongs. Admit your character defects. We don't heal. We don't move forward without cleaning stuff up. And America right now has a lot to look at. Even in this particular situation and how slow we were to respond to it because of the lack of, of investment made in, in, in our public good, medically, scientifically, in terms of health care, because of our leaders being more concerned about corporate well-being than with personal well-being. We really have to look at this and ask ourselves, is this what we want? Because you know, this could have been anything. <clears throat> it could have been a bioweapon, it could be a nuclear disaster, it could be a weather disaster, it could be an infrastructure disaster, and it still could be. So we have got to start living more with preparing for long-term good and investing in long-term good and investing in guarantee of people and planet, guaranteed safety and well-being. And we can't look at this as something other people will handle because clearly they didn't. Clearly they're not. So if we want an America on the other side of this, where we can feel more secure in the knowledge that bad things are less likely to happen, but even if bad things happen, we are prepared as a nation to weather the storm in a stronger boat than we clearly have now. We're going to have to make some changes, and those changes will only be made if we ourselves become much more active in that decision-making. 
What we have is a product of who we've been and how we've operated. And if we want something different, we're going to have to change and we're going to have to change our operating systems. Martin Luther King said, <clears throat> your life begins to end on the day you stop talking about things that matter. We've stopped even thinking about some things that matter. So yeah, does this feel terrible to look at some of this stuff? Absolutely. And I've seen in my own life what I'm sure you're experiencing in yours, my own stuff. It's happening, but just know that you're not the only one. The universe is self-organizing and it's self-correcting. Just like the cells in the body, they know how to organize themselves, but the, the body also has an immune system. It can take quite a, lot, quite a lot of injury and assault. And if the immune system is strong, the body makes it through. We have to all look at ourselves as immune cells in the body of humanity now. Our country needs a healthier immune system. We should not have been this vulnerable to this attack by a disease. We've had a <clears throat> crisis of adulthood in America for a long time. Too many men acting like boys and too many women acting like girls. And we're gonna grow up now. I've <clears throat> been through things in my own life where when I was younger, I realized I'd behave very recklessly and irresponsibly. And I've been through tragic situations before. But one of the things that I know is that tragedy and crisis humbles you, transforms you. And also what I know about having suffered, I went through an experience when I was very young, not that young, early 20, in my 20s. <clears throat> and at the end of it, I looked around and I thought, wow, do other people suffer? Because if other people have suffered a fraction of what I just went through, I feel such compassion for them. And what I realized is, oh yeah, they do, they always have. The difference is you didn't notice before. Other people's suffering just wasn't something you dwelled on because you had not been forced to dwell on your own before. <clears throat> Let our suffering not be in vain. Let it make us much more sensitive to the suffering of other people in ways that perhaps if we had been to a deeper degree, the situation wouldn't be as bad as it is. Suffering can give you x-ray vision into the suffering of others. So it's not too early to think about the changes that we want on the other side of this, because this will be over. Let's think about what we want to be different on the other side of this. <clears throat> we want a country that is far more conscious of investing in the long-term good of all of its citizens. A healthcare system that would support us in a moment like this, all of those outer things. But there's some other changes too. Let's pray to be better men and women, more conscious, more responsible, less self centered. I cried today. My mother used to say, You need a good cry. Sometimes you just need a good cry. I was holding it together until, <laughs> until I heard Bob Dylan's new song. It's okay that we all have a good cry. Some tears can be very purifying. And just know you're sad and everybody else is too. We've got to hunker down. It's a storm. It's an emotional storm, it's a psychological storm, and obviously it's a physical storm. And we will make it through. Is that famous, <clears throat> famous quote, mescalous, pain that cannot forget, falls drop by drop upon the heart, even in our sleep, until in our despair, 
against our will comes wisdom by the awesome grace of God. We're in despair. May it make us wise. We will get through this. And we'll be even better. When you're up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep, you're so afraid, just remember, we all feel that way. We're getting through this together. On the other side of this, there's some gargantuan light. I know it's a gargantuan darkness right now. Mark my word, it's going to be a gargantuan light. God bless you. Have a good night.